Being a writer can be an incredibly awesome adventure, providing someone with the opportunity to meet a wide variety of other creators, but also the opportunity to work on some incredible titles and IPs. And like this month's interviewee, it's entirely possible to have your work turned into a movie or television show. I'm your host, Garrett K. Jones. Welcome to the Milestone 200th episode where I get to interview award-winning author Jonathan Mayberry. Welcome back to The Right Way. Here we are. We have reached the 200th milestone episode. But before I jump into today's author awareness interview, let me go over just a few announcements. The most important of which is Author Awareness April kicking off in just two weeks. April will start off with a spring preview of what to expect as we move closer to summer, as well as it will quickly move into providing you with uh, information and snapshots on the authors that I got the chance to interview for this year's marathon. Now you might be saying, Garrett, I thought the marathon was always held in August, and usually that is the case. But this season I decided to have it in April, as the alliteration still works, and because it also provides me with an extra month to prepare for the next season. Lastly, I do want to promote a book written by my friend Kay Griffin Peterson. It's called Jane Doe. This book is one part psychological thriller and one part science fiction horror. It was a fun read and you can pick it up on Amazon by going to the link down in the video description. So yeah, I've been geeking out about this interview for months. It took every ounce of my willpower to keep this a secret. I started speaking with Mr. Mayberry about two years ago, and while he wasn't available for doing an interview then, he eventually became available last year, and I got to have a delightful conversation with him. If you're unfamiliar with his work, he has worked on several Marvel Comics properties, including uh, Marvel Zombies 3, uh, Marvel Universe vs. Wolverine, and several other titles. His IDW graphic novel series, V Wars, was turned into a 10-episode miniseries on Netflix starring Ian Somerhalder of Vampire Diaries fame. And he's edited at least two anthologies based on the Aliens and Predator franchises. So here we go. Here's my interview with multiple Stoker Award-winning author, Jonathan Mayberry. All right, Jonathan, thank you for joining me on the show. This is a real pleasure for me. Uh, thanks for having me here, Garrett. This is awesome. So uh, you've written so much stuff. I, I, I mean, how? I'm kind of geeking out here. Tell uh, tell the viewers at home what it is that you write and some of the things that they may know you from. Well, I'm a multi-genre writer, so I'm all over the place. I'm most well known for either the Joe Ledger thriller series, which I'm I just started the thirteenth book in that series. Um, also, the Rotten Ruin post-apocalyptic zombie series for teens, which uh, there are seven books in, and I've, I'm actually we have a movie in development now. Um, I've done a bunch of work from Marvel. Black, I did Black Panther and Captain America and Wolverine and Punisher, and just a bunch of other stuff. The, the novelization of the Wolfman, which was my first bestseller, and and just ton of other stuff. I, I I love jumping all over the place in terms of what I write. Plus, I edit Weird Tales magazine and I edit anthologies. So I've, I've got a bunch of titles out there and a whole lot more in development. My latest works are, uh, are epic fantasy. The, the new ones came out in January, um, uh, Son of the Poison Rose, second in my, my Cake in the Dam series. And uh, I'm cranking along with that as well as other projects. 
Awesome. So how did you get into writing? I, before we started the interview, I you mentioned that you'd gotten into journalism first and then you moved yeah. on to fiction. How did that happen? Well, I was always I always wanted to write. You know, when I was a kid, I would tell stories with toys before I could, you know, literally write. Um, but over the years, my my interest in writing shifted from telling, uh, f- you know, fiction to wanting to to be a reporter. Probably because I kind of came of of political age, so to speak, during the Watergate years when I was a teen, and I wanted to be either Woodward or Bernstein. Mm-hmm. So you know, I went up actually going to college on a on a journalism scholarship, Temple University School of Journalism, with every intention of becoming the intrepid reporter. And the one thing I had never done in 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 publishing is write for newspapers. Halfway through college, I got interested in magazine features and I kind of went off in that direction. I did that for years and years. Magazine features, fillers, reviews. Um, my first published books were nonfiction. In fact, my first book was a the judo textbook for Temple University's judo program. Um, did a bunch of those. I didn't switch to fiction until I was in my, my late 40s. Uh, I had written a nonfiction book about the folklore of supernatural monsters. And I got so interested in the folkloric versions of monsters, which are radically different than the Hollywood versions of vampires and werewolves and so on, that I kept looking for novels where they used those, you know, the original folkloric versions, couldn't find them. So my wife said, basically, stop bitching about it. Just write the damn thing. <laughs> I tried writing a novel, basically the novel I would want to read about those kinds of monsters and um, <laughs> fell in love with fiction. Like, I mean, fell in love hard, too. Yeah. Uh, that novel, Ghost Road Blues, came out in 2006, and last week I finished my 46th novel, and now I'm writing my 47th. Oh my and gosh. my agent has eight more sold that we haven't even written yet. Oh my gosh. So, I mean, you obviously you draw from a lot of folklore as an inspiration. Are there any other forms of inspiration that you draw from, whether it's like music, other art forms? Well, music for sure. Um, I listen to music all the time. I, I make pretty elaborate playlists. In fact, I just wrote a poem that was going to be it's going to be part of a short story collection that comes out here in 2023 that is um you know references uh, my two favorite singer songwriters Tom Waits and Leonard Cohen. Nice. And uh you know their their songs have inspired their darker stuff inspired me greatly and in fact quite a few of my stories are are either named after songs of theirs or reference songs of theirs. And um, so, yeah, music is important, though I listen to a lot of different forms of music. Um, I like all kinds of art. I'm an artist myself, uh, not a great artist, but enough to entertain myself. So I'm very visual. So that that informs a lot of the way I write. I want to see it in my mind. I'm also, you know, uh, I love film and TV. So I study that form as well. So a lot of different things, you know, kind of um, conspire to get my creative juices flowing in a certain way. You know, when I need to shift genre, shift genres a bit, I kind of shift a little bit of whatever creative input I'm taking. Like, you know, if I'm, I was writing epic fantasy, you know, I've written two so far and I have another one to write. Um, so I've been doing a little more movie soundtrack and a little more heavy metal, a bit more prog rock too, because it seems to fit the, uh, uh, the epic fantasy genre pretty well. Yeah. When I write my Joe Ledger stuff, there's, a lot of uh, you know seventies and eighties rock and roll, and a little bit of a little bit of metal, and um, a lot of blues show up in that too. So art in in its various forms influences me all the time. And what's fun is I'm aware of what the influences are, so I can kind of cater to those influences and kind of get that that you know creative mojo buzz going by just playing the right music, watching the right movies, or whatever. You know, and also reading the you know the authors that have always inspired me. Never that, that never lets me slow down. Never makes me feel like I'm I'm running out of ideas because creativity is endlessly elastic. Um. So, what's been one of the biggest challenges or obstacles that you have faced in the creation of your work? Enough hours in the day. Um. I mean, I I I do this for a living, so I'm writing eight hours a day, and currently with the schedule that my agent has has uh, basically set by selling books way in advance of my writing them. I'm now writing four novels a year. And that is going to be for the, at least the next, you know, it's been the last couple of years, but at least for the next two or three years, because there are eight and a half novels waiting to be written now that are sold and are calendared by, by the different publishers who bought them. Plus the challenge of finding enough time, because I also write short stories. I write comic books. I edit anthologies. I edit a magazine. All of that needs attention. 
Plus, yeah. I'm dizzy at all. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I'm, I need to really cultivate a work ethic at some point. And I love what I'm doing. It's just I want to be able to do do more of it. I wish I had started 20 years sooner because I didn't start fiction until I was 48, and I didn't know I would love it this much. I can't get enough of it. And so the real challenge for me is just having enough time to do all the projects I want to do because I have dozens of novel ideas and comic book ideas that I just don't have the time to write at the moment. And that's frustrating when you know you'd have fun writing it, but you know, you already sold something you got to write. Have you ever wanted to uh, do your own original comic that is not part of any of, uh, uh, you know, oh, yeah. already existing I, IP? I, I've done several of those. I did oh, I uh, bad blood for dark horse, which was uh, kind of a downbeat vampire comic. It was a great, you know, it was uh, five episodes. I think it's about a kid with leukemia fighting vampires, because if you're dying of leukemia, your take on immortal and living is a whole different thing than a vampire who won't ever die. And, um, and, and the conceit there is that his only superpower is the chemo drugs in his blood make, make his blood toxic to vampires. Um, so, and it won the Bram Stoker Award for Best Graphic Novel that year. Partly, I think, I mean, largely, I think, because Tyler Crook, who was my artist, knocked it out of the park. He's a pretty but, good artist. Yeah, he, he knows his way. Um, and he did, he did the, the pencils, inks, colors, and lettering, and covers. Oh my god! Um, and then I for IDW I did um, V Wars comics, which you know was, became a Netflix show for me. Um, I did uh, a Rot Ruin original Rot Ruin story that was not an adaptation of one of my novels. It was a graphic novel set between two of the books. And I did one work that was an original but tied to someone else's work. In, uh, after George Romero died, he was a good buddy of mine. Um, got, for those who may not know who he is, the writer director of Night of the Living Dead. Um, after he died, um, there was he had been working on a script for another zombie film and it was not a good script. He was old. He was sick. I, you know, he can be excused for the, it was a bad script. So after he passed, they knew that movie was never going to get made, but they liked the idea enough that his wife, his, his widow reached out to me and kind of asked if I would be willing to maybe do a comic book prequel to it to kind of let that story be out there. So it's my original story. It just uses the setup to what would have been that movie. Oh, that's cool. It's called, it called Road of the Dead, Highway to Hell. I had a great time doing that. And uh, so, I've, yeah, I've done original comics, um, and I will be doing more as time goes on. That's so cool. Say, once you get into the creative uh, fast lane, man, you never want to uh, take your foot off the gas. No. You never do. No, you don't. A couple of questions left. Um, what would you give as advice to other would-be authors out there? A couple of things. Uh, one, don't let anyone talk you out of it. Because people will try. Your friends, your family, they think they're doing some sort of an intervention by telling you how difficult it is to get into the business and how frustrating it is. And there's rejection letters and you won't make money, blah, blah, blah. Don't listen. Just do it anyway. Because you have no proof you'll fail. They have no proof you'll fail. So don't, you know, give it a shot anyway. Even if it means only writing a page a day while you're working a couple of day jobs, do it anyway. That's one thing. Second, don't buy into the myth of writer's block because that is not a thing. Writer's block is a propagandized label that we give to a whole bunch of different challenges that affect different writers. Each of those challenges has multiple workarounds. There's not one thing I've ever heard as a block that actually was a block. It was just meant that that given person didn't know that solution, but somebody else will. That's why writers should always network with one another, talk things out, join writers groups, because if you don't know the path, somebody else will, and you might have something that'll help them. But don't believe that writer's block is some, you know, mile high stone wall with no doors in it. It's not the case. Um, and third, a bit of advice that Ray Bradbury gave me when I was 13. He said, don't just write the book that you would, you know, want to read, because that's what they usually tell you to do, write the book we want to read. He said, don't do that. Write the book you would go out of your way to hunt down and read. Write that one, which is hugely important. And um, two other bits of advice. Another one from Ray Bradbury is follow the Ten Commandments for how to be a great writer. They are don't be a jackass. Don't be a jackass. Don't be a jackass and so on. <laughs> uh, and uh, another one, which was from Richard Matheson, same, met him around the same time. And he he advised me never to let myself be pigeonholed into one box. He said, you might fall in love with the genre, but what if that genre goes cold? Yeah. You're going to be you're going to be out in the cold. So you know, write the book you most want to write, and then find out how to sell it. 
And if you look at Richard Matheson's career, I Am Legend, What Dreams May Come, Star of Echoes, um, I, uh, Incredible Shrinking Man, um, Somewhere in Time. I mean, those books don't even fit on the same shelf. No, they're all, they're all different genres. They are. And that and and that's his that was his career, you know. So I took that advice and I've I've applied it to my own career. And you know, one last little bit is anytime another writer asks you for advice, give it. Never be afraid of sharing advice, never be afraid of helping other writers. Final question How can people get a hold of your work? Uh, I mean, obviously there's a, a plethora of different ways, but uh, what's the way that is most applicable for you? Well, if they want to just find out about me, they can go to my website, which is jonathanmayberry.com. And the trick is spelling my last name right. It's M-A-B-E-R-R-Y, not M-A-Y. Um, but also, if they ever want to get signed books, um, Mysterious Galaxy Bookstore in San Diego is my local store. They can get any book that anyone wants that, I, that I've, I have, I have available. And since it's my local store, they'll let me know to come in and sign and personalize the books. It's the easiest way. And, you know, I'm easy to find. I'm on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, though, not very much. Um, Facebook, I'm, I'm all over the place. So I'm pretty easy to find if you spell my last name right. Well, I know I can. and It's definitely going to be in the video description. So, And actually, one, one more quick thing. For those who are writers out there listening to this, if you go to my website, in the menu bar, you'll see one tag that says free stuff for writers. It has samples of query letter, comic book samples, novel format samples, lists of genres and subgenres, all free downloadable PDFs. Go grab what you need. Jonathan, thank you so much for your time. This has been just an absolute tremendous pleasure for me to have you on the show. Uh, my pleasure, Garrett. And thanks, thanks for having me here. I hope to come back someday. Absolutely. Now, if you're interested in connecting with Mr. Mayberry through social media or picking up copies of his books, you'll find those links by visiting the video description. If you're interested in seeing the uncut version of this interview, you can easily sign up as a supporter through Patreon. There are support options of $1, 3 and $5 per month, and all patron levels get access to the uncut, unedited interviews. But the higher you go, the cooler the rewards. Hey, thanks for watching. Please hit like, hit subscribe, and hit the bell for notifications on new videos. You can support the channel on Patreon and the merch store. Those links can be found down in the video description. Make sure to tune in next week for the March live stream only on Instagram. You can follow me at GKJ underscore publishing. See you then.